Good morning and welcome everyone to the Imagine webinar series. Today is our ninth installment in the series and we are going to be hearing from Jerry Swanson from the City of Traverse City on the art of integration, elevating your GIS data with BSNA. Again, thank you all for joining us. Uh, we're really enjoying this webinar series, a lot of different topics that have come through so far and we're planning and building some more. Uh, we've got them all scheduled through the end of April or beginning of May, and we have put out now a call for additional presentations. So if you're interested in presenting, uh, get in contact with us. We'll have some more communications coming in the next week or two on that, and also the Imagine newsletter went out last week with that information. So again, welcome to our webinar. A couple of introductory slides. I just want to thank our, web our webinar hosts and our series sponsors, uh, Fishbeck Engineers, Giffels Webster, and BSNA software. So uh, if you have a chance, reach out to them uh, and see how they can help you in the work that you're doing. We'll hear a lot about BSNA today with Jerry's presentation. We have a couple of housekeeping things that I wanna just go over. Uh, reminders for the next two webinars. April 1st, we're gonna have real-time plowing, AVL and geo event server at, the, at Lansing, pre uh, presented by Andy Skelton. And then on April 15th, we're gonna have a presentation on aerial imagery. Rapidly Evolving Technology for the Future of Small Cities by Jackson Adams. So make sure you register at imagine.org for those webinars as well. Uh, throughout the webinar today, uh, send your questions in via either your question or chat box. Those are both being monitored and uh, either during the presentation, uh, Jerry may ask to grab some of those questions or we will have those, uh, we should have time at the end to address all your questions. Webinar is being recorded. Uh, so we'll post that up within the next week or so. Uh, and then you can always check out our website for more information on the webinar series, see the back uh, recordings of the past webinars, and also see the slide decks. And with that, I am going to go ahead and hand over presentation to Jerry, and we will get started. So Jerry, here it comes. Great. Well, thanks, Tom. And uh... Tom mentioned, yeah, I'm Jerry Swanson. I'm the GIS coordinator for the city of Traverse City. And today we're going to be looking at the art of integration and kind of how we've been utilizing some different techniques to integrate with BSNA. So essentially, uh, kind of the premise of this presentation was prior to last year's Imagine Conference. I was kind of having some philosophical discussions with Brooks Kelly from Avinian uh, about some of the, you know, best ways to achieve different results and, and the best path to get there, specifically with pulling data out of BSNA. Um, I started working for the city a couple of years ago, and we had already uh, implemented some of them, uh, some integration, and, and I was looking to kind of add to it or uh, kind of enhance some of the uh, data that we were using. So with that, uh, today I'm gonna just cover kind of our system background so everyone has an idea of what I'm working with. And then I'll kind of go over the thought and process reasoning when looking to integrate with BSNA and go over some pros and cons, some considerations. And then I'm gonna touch on the scheduled task versus the spatial view and kind of the differences there. And then we'll kind of dive into uh, specifically the safe software FME and how we're using that for our tax parcel viewer. And then also look at some of the spatial views we've built um, also integrating into uh, BSNA. And then I'll just finish with some lessons learned and kind of where we're going next. So for system background, we're running uh, ArcGIS desktop and server at 1061 uh, utilize uh, AGO, so we're not a true enterprise yet. Um, and then we have two SQL servers on uh, two different machines, one for the GIS and one for BSNA. And we're using the 2020 FME build and utilizing the web app builder. And then for this specifically, we're really just using our GIS parcels and then some various uh, tables and modules within BSNA. 
So for thought process and reasoning, um, again, this is kind of that philosophical question uh, when you're starting to look into how you want to tap into the data is first would be your relationship. So uh, is this something that's just going to be a, a common identifier, you know, using a join? Um, or is there a little more complex with some spatial relationships or a spatial overlay? Uh, luckily, with city parcels, uh, we have that magic pin number that really drives a lot of this. But obviously, there's plenty of ways, especially with FME, to incorporate that spatial aspect. The other thought would be timing. So how critical is this data? And, the, and how does uh, frequently does it need to be updated or viewed? So are you looking for a real-time integration or is it more of a scheduled, you know, nightly uh, task running or maybe it's a monthly update? So that's another thing to, to think about and what your end users are uh, looking for. And then complexity. So, you know, sometimes it can be a very simple one field and one table that you're trying to to join. Or in the case of for our tax parcel viewer, you have multiple fields, multiple tables, multiple databases. So kind of just understanding that complexity piece. And then finally, the use. So, you know, what is the actual purpose of, you know, your end product? Um, is this an internal uh, application or, or uh, public facing uh, map? And we'll look a little closer, but Sometimes you might have a specific purpose for a department that's working with BSNA and they just want a couple items to be pulled out. So again, what, what's the, the end purpose there? And then kind of most importantly is the visual. Uh, obviously, once you're tapping into geospatial data, you can get a visual representation of some of the data that resides in BSNA. But also, um, there's a lot of value in terms of actual fields that you can pull out. So kind of looking at all those different uh, facets to try to figure out your next steps. So when looking at the pros and cons for either just some of the pros I came up with was the nice thing, you know, BSMA is a very massive uh, database with lots of information. And so one of the nice things about tying it to your GIS is you can really hone in on some of that data that you really just want to be able to share. Um, you can really filter it out and, and just pull what, what is needed for, for your output. And on that same token, you have that ability to kind of fine tune, um, again, exactly what you want to pull out of that massive database. As I mentioned before, the, the visual representation is, is crucial. Um, being able to spatially see data on a map and um, that's really the, the crux of it all. And the other one would be, you know, sometimes there's, there's some initial legwork to get these up and running and even maintaining them. But, you know, if you put that time in, it can actually lead to some decreased workload later for yourself. So you might have to heavy handed put, it a, put time in in the beginning, but, um, in theory, it should run smooth and other than some basic maintenance. Uh, and we'll talk about that can also be a con, uh, depending on what you're doing. And then another one I've found by working with this is uh, the ability to kind of share BSNA data to non-users. So uh, obviously there's a lot of permissions and access granted to various users throughout the city. And so by tapping in and, and again, pulling that pertinent data people that maybe don't use BSNA are able to view some of that data, uh, in our case, in a map. So some of the cons, and not necessarily the cons, I guess just more hurdles that you might come across when integrating. Uh, obviously, determining what data and where is that located. Uh, luckily, in BSNA, they make it pretty simple. Uh, if you're in the program, you can you know, right click and see that table and where that data is being pulled from. So that does help, but again, there's a lot of, um, a lot of tables and, and information to kind of shuffle through to find what you're looking for. Another would be uh, schema changes, and we actually ran into this 
recently with our tax parcel viewer, there was a a schema change that went to a coded value in one of the fields that we were pulling, and it kind of broke a, a portion of our tax parcel viewer, and, and it took a little bit of work to figure out what was actually wrong because we thought maybe it was something on our end, but it actually was something in BSNA, and so kind of always got to keep your eye out for things like that if there's some changes. Um, another one that I, I learned early was kind of understanding that subject matter expert lingo and, and uh, you know, what is their actual goal? So especially in assessing, I'm not an assessor. It's kind of uh, black magic to me. So trying to be on that same language of, you know, they might say, hey, I wanted to do this and that. And then you're like, I don't really understand what that means. So kind of really uh, trying to come to that common ground on, on what their end goal is. Um, another thing is just that year-to-year -year maintenance. Um, you know, again, this in theory, you could set it up and it just runs, but there's always tweaks and um, can be changes and just maintaining to, to keep the integration in place uh, and working properly. Um, so, again, that's just got to be kind of built into uh, your workflow. And then as we probably all, most GS people have seen, you know, there are all, always some limitations uh, working with Esri or just in general and, and getting it to do what you want to can sometimes be a struggle. So sometimes you just got to, you know, do your workarounds in GIS and kind of maybe do it a <laughs> three-step way versus one and, and uh, to try to get that result. And then in general, just there's always issues with uh, working with data and software and troubleshooting and, you know, it, it can be kind of complex. So it's just something that has to be uh, worked through as you're building these out. So some considerations when maybe looking into pulling data out of BSNA would be, um, you know, is this information that is someone in your organization is requesting or are you yourself saying, hey, I can tap into this and try to create something? Because um, there's, there's pros and cons to both of that. Uh, sometimes it's nice if someone, hey, can we pull this information out and have it be on the map and then you, you try to figure out how to do it? But other times you might go to someone and say, hey, here's this uh, thing I did. Is this something that might be helpful? And that kind of leads to, you know, will it be used? So, you know, in one of the cases, I started pulling data out kind of on my own. And, you know, that's kind of a challenge to say, you know, to remind people that, hey, this is available. Um, and again, it's kind of switching up maybe some of their workflow, but uh, that's kind of a, a big component is you don't want to spend all this time pulling data out and, and it just sits there. Um, this kind of goes to, you know, the saving of time. Is this something that, you know, maybe it's something you do twice a year uh, to pull data out or, or produce some, a report or something? And is it something that you actually, uh, does it actually make sense to take the time to build an integration piece? Um, is it, you know, in some cases it's just easier to manually do something, um, you know, and that kind of goes same with GIS with Python. Like, is it worth building a, a script and when it's something you could probably just do easier uh, manually? And then another component is just, um, you know, how you want to handle certain aspects. So is it something in the case of like FME, do you want to handle uh, some of the output and, and deal with it within the FME workspace? or maybe the SQL statement for a spatial view, or are you better off dealing with it once you have that output and then manipulating it within GIS? So kind of, there's always multiple ways to scan a cat. Um, another one which maybe could be argued is, you know, is it maybe just too complex? Maybe what's being requested or it just is not that it's impossible. It's just, hey, this is really a complex, uh, task that I'm trying to achieve and it might just not be uh, worth the time. And then finally, one thing I've learned is uh, the ability to bring in a consultant, you know, someone that's got 
higher skills than I do to assist with some of the more complex, uh, especially when it comes to SQL and and so that's always a good consideration to have. So now I'm going to just touch base on the scheduled tasks versus kind of the spatial view, and these are the two um, main things we're working with. So in, for the purpose of this presentation, the scheduled task is an FME workspace that you're running, you know, on the Windows task scheduler. And so with that, you know, you're getting it, the updating or the the workspace is running on a schedule. So you and you get to set that obviously through, you know, is it a nightly run? Is it something that's running every week? And so you have a lot of control over that um, scheduling. And in our case, it actually, you know, it's creating a new or I guess an appended out, output in, in the form of a feature class. And so you're kind of getting that updated uh, layer uh, on a schedule. And one thing we've, I've run into is uh, in the case of our tax parcels, you know, it's it's a uh, it's not registered as version, and so there's obviously some limitations with that. You know, we don't edit our parcel data. We pretty much FME handles that um, on this nightly update, and but depending on what you're pulling or or what you're doing, it might that could cause some issues if you're trying to um, you know append a, a, a registered feature class. Um, for the spatial view, which in our case, you know, it's a SQL statement that's uh, created between GIS and the BSNA database, and it's querying, you know, specific information. And so we'll look at this a little more, but, you know, this is something that's created in Catalog or in uh, SQL Server Management Studio. And really the, the big benefit here is you have that dynamic update. So once changes are saved, you're seeing that result instantaneously. Um, now there is a little caveat with ArcMap. If you're bringing in a spatial view into your ArcMap, um, you can refresh that layer or reload to get those changes. Um, and for a lot of my end users, they're not going to do that. So again, they open their ArcMap every morning and close it and then open it the next day. So they'll kind of still have that nightly uh, updating of, of that layer. Whereas if you're using a map service, uh, you know, if you're panning the map or zooming in and out, essentially refreshing, it'll, uh, those changes will be uh, dynamically shown. And since I'm not a huge SQL uh, guy, I know just enough, but not enough. Um, I do think it can require some more skill to write some of these statements as they come, become more complex. Whereas I think FME, if you have some basic training and, and using the internet, you can really um, kind of run with that uh, versus, you know, diving into the, to the SQL. So we'll go ahead and start looking at some of the applications. So uh, this is something I kind of inherited when I started at the city. Uh, and this is a, a public facing tax parcel viewer. Uh, it's our most used viewed uh, application, and this is purely driven by FME. We have multiple databases, multiple tables, um, numerous transformers, and we have this running on a scheduled task uh, every morning, 6 a.m. runs. So, you know, the next day you pull up the tax parcel viewer and you'll see the any of the changes that I had happen in BSNA. Um, in our case, since we're a city, we uh, annually we receive a parcel um, update from the county. So again, we get that update. We, you know, it comes uh, with the pins. We do a little cleanup on it, but that just resides in our enterprise GIS, and that's what we're basing that uh, join again on that pin through the BSNA assessor module. So with that, we get an output. Um, feature class and also a sales table. So both of the feature class and the sales table are being updated uh, nightly, or I guess in the morning. And then we both, uh, both of those are then published as map services. And then once we've got those map services, uh, there's some custom pop-ups that we built to really kind of refine and clean up the data, you know, add money signs, um, 
just try to make it a little more user friendly. And then also with once the city uh, implemented this years ago, there's also a custom uh, pop up that kind of shows some additional property details, and, and we'll look at that too. So this is our FME workspace. Uh, I tried to capture it in one screenshot, and so you can see there's a lot of data being pulled from different tables and, and it, um, a lot of uh, <laughs> transformers and attribute managers. But the end goal again is it's one single feature class. Um, that's our tax parcels and then that sales table. So here's a live look. Um, and you'll see over here, I'll, I'll click on the map, but this is essentially all the, so this is all the information we've filtered through and wanted to display to the public. So obviously your basic information that you pull, owner address, um, taxable values, You'll see we actually include um, the current and the previous year. So again, that's pulling from two different tables and you're actually kind of querying um, that 2020 um, year. And also then pulling some building information, year bill, square footage, zoning, acreage. So, um, you know, this is kind of the condensed version of uh what we decided to show to the public so if i actually come in here i'll click on this same parcel so again you can see that information has been pulled cleaned up um, and we also have a hyperlink down here that is kind of that custom pop-up i mentioned so this is going to actually pull the imagery that's stored in bsna uh, there's an embedded map some more information um, and then here's our sales sales data as well so if there's multiple sales um, you can tab tabulate those and this would be an example of something you know if there was a sale performed today it got updated in bsna when it ran tomorrow morning you come in here and you would see that transaction so that's you know it's that one day lag um, now, without getting all the nitty-gritty details, you know, there's certain sales we don't want to show. There's certain confidential sales. There's certain, you know, some properties don't have sales data. So some of that, you know, we handle in, in various, either in FME or in the code for this pop-up viewer. So there's a little bit more that goes into, we don't just share everything. And that's, again, working with the city assessor's office. So for the most part, the tax parcel viewer runs pretty smooth. Um, but as I mentioned earlier, there's always a maintenance piece. And so since I started working with this, we've kind of made some tweaks here and there. Um, we initially started, it was one FME workspace that you would, you know, update every year annually when there'd be a new database rollover. So the assessor is moving to the next year's database. So we'd come in here and manually update. Um, maybe make some tweaks here and there in some of the attribute manager transformers, but for the most part, it was, you know, come in here and <laughs> um, make those changes annually. Well, as we started to get more comfortable, the, um, the city assessor requested, uh, she was like, you know, can we, during March border review, can we show our updated values for like that period? You know, they send out the, the mail, tax assessments and so she wanted those values, new values to be shown in the tax parcel viewer. And so uh, working with Brooks, I, I we kind of were like, you know, we should just create a second workspace. So we actually have two now where we, we run one from February to March during March border review. And then we have another one that we run March to February. So that runs almost the whole rest of the year. And one of the reasons is that is, again, you, you don't do it all the time, so you come in here and you're, you're always trying to remember exactly what you need to do and what needs to be shown. So I think this has really helped us kind of streamline that. We just kind of changed the scheduler to run uh, one of those two workspaces, depending on the time of year. And um, it seemed to be working pretty good so far. I think we implemented it last year. And so actually pretty soon here, March Board Review is done, and we'll, we'll make the switch over again. 
And, but we also definitely utilize the notes and the annotation. As you can see, there's uh, some notes in this one because again, there's a lot going on in this particular workspace. And so trying to just really remember what needs to be changed or how to um, make sure you're getting the right data shown uh, using those kind of notes helps within the workspace. And then kind of what always happens, you start doing something um, or improving on something and then they're like, well, can you do this or can you do this? So uh, sometimes you can add to your workload, but in one case they wanted to, to show the confidential sales um, in that pop-up as labeled as confidential. So that was a, you know, we came in and, and tweaked one of the attribute managers to essentially it's a Boolean field in there. And so we set a value of negative one for all checked confidential and then built that into the code for the property details. So if, if the assessor's office marks the sale as confidential in that tax parcel uh, pop-up, it'll um, display the word confidential. Whereas I think before it was just blank. So we kind of small enhancement there. So that's kind of our public facing, uh, pretty complex FME workspace for our tax parcel viewer. And then as I started working more with the assessor's office, uh, we started talking about other ways we can tap into BSNA for kind of some internal operations. So in this case, they, uh, they were requesting kind of a dynamic map that shows you know, these various values and codes that they're changing or reviewing uh, throughout the year. And so they wanted a map that visually kind of displayed all of these um, different entities that they, again, it's black magic to me, but they know what they're doing. Um, but they did want the values to be updated as they're saving it. So they didn't want it to be necessarily the next day. Um, they really, we're looking for a dynamic so they can make a change of BSNA and then the map would be updated. Um, so that kind of led to looking at the other way of doing business, which is the spatial view. And, you know, I, thinking about it, we probably could have done it in FME and have that running every 10 minutes or, you know, we could have gone that route, but we decided to just, um, uh, go the spatial view route. So we created this SQL statement with uh, help from Brooks and it pretty much is it's a simple join again through the city parcels and the BSNA database. And so what we're doing is again, we're taking those two databases that are on different machines. We're able to um, access both read only and we're just doing a simple join between that pin and then we're pulling those uh, specific fields that they were looking for. And, you know, pretty much between where clauses and we converted some of the sales data. Other than that, it's, it was pretty straightforward. Um, and again, some of this information is already in the tax parcel layer, but again, with that dynamic feature, they wanted it to be, they didn't want to wait till the next day. They wanted it. Uh, pretty much instantaneously. So, hence, using that view really uh, produces that form. So, once we got the SQL statement set up, uh, we created a view within Catalog. You can also do it within uh, Management Studio. And so now we have this parcel assessor view, and then we can uh, pretty much from there configure it within the MXD to create all these different definition queries. So it's one singular view, but as you'll see, I think there's like seven or eight different layers or maybe six different layers that we created. And that's a case of using the GIS to get what we want versus having six different views um, through SQL. So we kind of are querying it after uh, the fact. So we set that symbology and we published it as a map service. And it's essentially just a simple web app that they can pull up on their screen and um, I'll pull that up for you. So you'll see over here, here's all the different assessor views. Um, so one thing they wanted to see is 
all the sales for different years. So I'll we'll actually be adding the 2021 here soon. And so again, it's visual on what properties were sold year to year. And again, because of these definition queries, it's pretty uh, fast, you know, I mean, there's a lot of information in this view. So being able to really uh, fine tune with that query, you can see it, it's pretty responsive. Surprisingly, 2020's got a lot of sales. Um, and then more with the dynamic pieces, there's these couple fields they look at. One is the land value. And again, this is just classifications they have on certain parcels. And so they really wanted to see that visual, you know, they can, based on, the, you know, these codes that they have. So they can visually see the properties and what they're assigned. And so again, I think as part of their process, they're they're always reviewing this and making changes. And so this really gives them a nice, clear visual on what parcels are categorized what. And you can only imagine trying to visually get that out of just looking in uh, the BSNA module. Um, so this really tight, really uh, ties it in nice. Same with this EF ECF. Going to lag a little bit. So again, that and so as part of their workflow, if for a particular uh, parcel, if they were to change the ECF code um, in here, once they hit save and they move their map, this would change color or change code. So that's kind of where that dynamic really comes in handy for when they're working with the data. So again, as anything, once you start pulling data out or seeing some cool results, you start thinking about other ways you can do it. And so um, this kind of happened a little more organically is uh, the engineering department had requested a map of all the stormwater permits from the previous year. And with MBSMA, they, again, that pin, that magic number is in there. And but it was really clunky for me because I didn't have access to that particular module. Uh, I had to get a staff member from engineering to export it out in Excel. Um, and then I, you know, manually performed a join, created a PDF map. And uh, that got me thinking though, you know, why don't we just pull all these permits out with a spatial view and that way we have it at our disposal. So you can query, you know, all sorts of different fields from that. And if, you know, if they were to ask me again this year for all the stormwater permits, I would just be able to go into that view and, and query what I need and, and produce that map way quicker than that kind of multi-step process. And, um, and again, it's a pretty simple view or a simple join between those parcels in the uh, BSNA permit table. And, you know, the, the one thing when you're working with SQL is, um, you know, when we first did it, the output had all these coded values and trying to, uh, and it wasn't very simple to figure out what each coded value were, was. So that took a little bit of research and, and kind of working actually with the licensor that does the building permits to, to get those coded values and what their text actually should be. So, Working through that though, we were able to, as you can see in the script here, or the SQL statement, you know, we just ended up doing a win and then, so that in the actual view, when you click on it, we get those uh, statuses, the issued, canceled, final. And then you can see there's a couple in there, number four, 18, they didn't necessarily have a uh, any value, and I think there's a couple records. So sometimes you find some interesting tidbits when you're, looking at the database on the back end. And then, again, we only wanted to include pertinent fields um, that would be helpful for the staff. So this is a case where um, really did the rest of the handling was in, was, was in GIS. And so the 
the spatial view actually includes all the city permits from the past 20 years, which you can only imagine. I mean, multiple parcels have had, or a single parcel might have had 20 different permits on it. So it's really a pretty um, sluggish uh, view, um, especially if you just try to load it directly in ArcMap. It, it takes a while to even render. But I did want that because I didn't want to have to modify that SQL statement every time I wanted to change what I wanted to see. So with that flexibility I wanted, it made sense to just, hey, give us everything and then we will control it with that definition query. So you'll see an MXD, and this is an MXD a lot of the end users use. So I just have four different layers that have this definition query based on their type and their status. And it's viewed as four separate layers, but again, it's all the same uh, spatial view that we're using to display those. And then we did the same with the web map. We used the filter, and again, it really helps with the performance uh, of, of those layers. So I kind of recall at some point, you know, maybe it was at a conference, someone said, you know, just build a dashboard, even if they don't ask, just show them. Because again, they might not even know that that's a possibility. So of course, I went and threw this in the dashboard, and this is still being worked on. Uh, it's pretty simple right now. It's just showing simple count of issued permits for each type. Um, but I think what I found that the engineering department was having issues with was, you know, they would might get a call that says. Um, hey, you know, we're, does this person have a permit? They're doing work, you know, whether it's a city, other city staff member or the public. And so, you know, they didn't really ever know the address of, you know, the person that was calling just said it was on a certain street. And so now the um, permitting specialist can come in and actually see, you know, if it's on Washington Street, they can see what permits are issued on that street and so it kind of helps with that geographic uh, component and I'm trying to get it to be a little more in his workflow too where you know if he's going around and doing inspections he can actually pull this up on his phone and you know actually visually see where all these different um, permits are and in this case we just pulled that pertinent information again you know permit number owner type some dates, contractors. So again, just giving them what they need for quick, easy access. Now, you know, their current workflow is to just go into BSNA and look this up. So I'm trying to get them, you know, more and more comfortable with, hey, you know, this is something that's dynamically updated. Um, it's just as accurate as the database in BSNA. It just gives you that, you know, quick access view of, of what's going on. So that's still being worked on. Uh, you know, I think there's some more functionality I can build into that, you know, doing some searches or just kind of making that web map a little better. Um, but again, it was kind of a case where I just wanted to kind of show the capability and say, hey, this is something we can do. Um, didn't take a whole lot of time to set up and uh, haven't had too much of a maintenance on it. So some of the lessons learned, um, I kind of was just mentioning this, but the building of confidence in the output. So um, our uh, zoning administrator um, gave him a hard time because I was showing him that he can look at this on his GIS now. And he's like, well, I don't know. How do I know this is right? And I was like, well, it's the exact same data that's in your BSNA. <laughs> And, and so he actually, I sat there with him and he went and checked, he'd check a permit in VSNA and then he'd go to the map and it would be shown as a issued permit. He probably did five of those. And he's like, all right, I mean, I'm still not really trusting this, but it does look like it is pulling the right information. And I was like, yeah, I mean, it's, I'm not making it up. We're just querying the database that you're, that you're using. So building that confidence that what they're seeing is accurate. And that goes the same with the tax parcel viewer, you know, 
if it's in there, the next day it'll be updated and um, we have to, you know, between the public or internally, you know, this thing, unless it's broken, is as accurate as, as it can be. Um, another thing would just uh, sometimes you're better to do something to be told. So that's kind of the case of the permitting. I didn't, no one really was asking for it. So I just went ahead and did it to be like, hey, these are some capabilities because sometimes they might not know that that's a possibility that we have with our current system. You know, we, it wasn't like we had to buy something new um, to, to pull that information out. Um, and then on that same token, sometimes you're better off just showing that capability and then getting their feedback, you know, hey, here's these permits. And they're like, well, can it show this or can it do this? And that's kind of what the assessor's department's been like is, they're constantly, hey, can we show this or how do we, can we make it do this? And so sometimes you're better off just setting something up and then tweaking um, accordingly. Um, and then building that maintenance or troubleshooting time. Again, for the most part of this stuff runs pretty smooth, but there is always um, that inherent maintenance that you just have to maintain and keep, make sure it's running properly throughout the year. Um, and I mentioned this earlier, but one of the big things I've saw was, um, you know, we have like our water sewer department. They don't necessarily have access to BSNA or permits. I mean, they can get that information with a phone call. But being able to pull those permits, especially for the land use, um, meaning there's construction or going on, this allows them to now view that data on their map, whereas they don't even have that access um, to log into BSNA. So, kind of really can start sharing that information further throughout the, the organization. And um, obviously that needs to be discussed with administration on what people can see or not, but a lot of this information is essentially public. So anyway, I've seen that um, talking to other departments and kind of seeing it, how they can utilize some of this um, can be helpful. And then finally, the uh, again, probably said we a couple times throughout this, you know, using a consultant in my case, especially being new to the city and having new softwares to learn, it's been really helpful to have someone to talk through this. And, you know, I kind of um, work, try to work with the departments and get their needs and try to figure out what they're looking to do. And then instead of me wasting a bunch of time trying to learn, um, especially the more complex skills, Sometimes it's actually just saves me saves time and money to just um, utilize an expert. So with that, um, thanks for listening today. I did want to give a special thanks to Brooks uh, Brooks Kelly from Vinian, who's uh, kind of helped me with some of this. And I'd be happy to take any questions. My contact information's down there. Um, I think we we're going to mention the. the Story map will make it available, uh, but I'm probably gonna have to come in and just remove a couple of the internal links because those aren't, you won't be able to access them anyway. Um, but yeah, so. Thank you, Jerry. Uh, very good presentation and a lot, of, a lot of details behind where you're moving that data around. We do have a few questions, so I'll uh, go ahead and run through those. So I think we've got a bit of time here and uh, get your responses to those. So. Dan asks, how do you manage condominiums? Do you have one parent parcel and then pull a one-to-many relationship uh, for the condo information from BSNA tables? In other words, do you need a parent parcel number in order to have the relation between the one GIS parcel and multiple records from BSNA? Yeah, so the way we handle condos is they're just stacked identical parcels. So in this case, if I select this as an apartment building downtown, you'll see there's actually 45 um, records here. And so yeah, each has an individual um, unique parcel ID and there is a master parcel ID, but so yeah, we're able to just, I mean, it's stacked. <laughs> the data is stacked, but yeah, so they're actually but they're individual parcels. So there's the master file. Um, you can see there's no information. It's a kind of a base pin. But yeah, the rest are all 
um, just stacked uh, polygon. Good. And that's how, that's how we receive them from the county, so. And Jana asks, uh, in regards to sales, has there been any pushback on displaying the sales data publicly? I know you addressed some of that by hiding confidential sales, but has there been any other pushback about sale data being displayed and people not wanting it displayed? Um, surprisingly, um, since I've been working with it, I haven't, we haven't had any requests to change other than that confidential. Um, you know, I actually think it's, I was actually kind of surprised myself that we had that information available, but I guess it's something that, um, is, you know, something that was determined that can be at least requested from the public. And so for us to just put that out there and, um, I think that's, you know, why we get so much use out of this particular application is I can, you can imagine real estate or developers are probably using that information. So yeah, we haven't had really any pushback. Um, most of them are arm's length sales. Um, and there are a handful of classifications that we just don't show sales data. Um, and actually I think for this property, um, if you go looking for the sales data, we, it's just blank. So again, there's probably a reason there's something, there's some reason and, and, but we also don't really receive feedback on why that's not shown. So, um, yeah, and that's usually just the, the assessors, you know, liable for, for what we're showing. So. Good. Chad asks if you've ever created heat maps of sales to determine hot spots for sales. No, that's a good question. Um, you know, now that we have the data, that's something, I mean, just throwing it in pro or an AGO, you, we could do that pretty quickly. Um, I know there's been some good presentations. I think uh, Lori Spencer up in Leland has done some heat mapping on their sales. And uh, I know our city assessor, we've talked about it too. So yeah, I mean, that's the nice thing about once you kind of get some of this information, you can kind of take it to that next level or the analytics side of things. Yeah, that's good. Sure. Okay. Ariana asks if there's a relationship where if you change the data in GIS, can that update the BSNA or is it just from BSNA to the GIS? Yeah, so for us, no. Um, we have read only uh, connections and um, it's it's definitely a one-way integration and I think that's one of the reasons it's made this kind of simplified is that we have our parcel layer that we get once a year that we don't edit you know we don't do you know we which is a downside because if we have any splits or combines we don't get those until that dump from the county um, but yeah so we essentially have a, a GIS parcel layer that we don't really edit um, and then we, the BSNA is being edited by those users. So yeah, it's a one way and it does make it less complex, um, uh, moving data back and forth. Um, but yeah, we, you definitely, uh, you know, with some of our, we have an asset management system that we do have some of that capability of two way integration, but for this, we're, we're just doing a simply pulling the data out. Dan asks, uh, do you have a team or a department for GIS? I think kind of asking how many staff are working GIS for the city. Yeah, so it's a little interesting. I'm, I'm uh, essentially, I'm, I'm the GIS division of one person. I'm um, under the city manager's office. But within the city, we have um, multiple GIS uh, editors. So we have someone in engineering. Then we have an asset management team that has two uh, GIS people. So we're kind of spread out and my role as the coordinator is trying to <laughs> communicate and, and work with all, all the various departments. So um, I definitely get help and actually one of my um, asset management technician, Neil Saban, he's also skilled in SQL probably more, you know, more than I am. So I, I do rely on him as well for some of the, the data stuff. So yeah, it, it is definitely a team effort, but um, I am kind of the one-man GIS uh, 
guy in the GIS division. But okay. um, question actually for me that I had, when you were talking towards the end about the permits and showing permits, is your integration for that coming from the assessing connection for permit data or are you actually going back to because bsna has two modules they have the permit module and then they have the assessing module and so my question is are you pulling the permit data from permits module of bsna or are you pulling it from assessing because the two of those programs can i know can, can talk together but you get a limited set of what's in you know the full permit suite has a lot more information in it than what the assessing side gets from permits if you follow my question there Right, yeah. So for the permits, which I actually think it's called the building department module. Um, so yeah, we're actually, in this case, we're directly hitting that permit table that's in the building permit module. So yeah, we're not hitting the, the assessing database. It's this okay. permit table is what we're pulling from, yeah. Okay, good. Uh, Tony has just a comment. Uh, he says, Jerry, I had the same exact experience in Ann Arbor. Assessors now trust spatial views. So your comment about having to get <laughs> them to understand that it is live and it does work. So he's just sharing his support for that. <laughs> yep. And Scott says, uh, do you use cemetery module of BSNA? And if you do, how is that going? Um, we currently do not. Um, that actually makes me write a note down because maybe that's something we should look into. But no, we um, we don't currently utilize that. But um, in the city, we actually uh, we use the assessing and permitting for a long time. But we a couple of years ago did the full switch to BSNA for everything else. So I think we're still kind of um, figuring out what we can utilize it for. So that's that's a good point to bring up because. We do have a cemetery. And to Scott's question, I know a couple of us have done that, so we can, on a different call, uh, talk through that. I've done quite a bit with pulling some data from cemetery, BSNA, and then also storing others. Uh, the big difference is most people don't have a starting geography for the cemetery, and that has to be built first uh, to get your ge geographic component. But we can take that into another discussion, too. No, that, that'd be great. And Tony just shares again, it did take a while to get them to trust it. Uh, it takes it takes a while. So well, right, that yeah, and it's it kind of is like you you know, I'm not the data is what you guys put in, you know, it's not I'm not changing anything, I'm just connecting it, right? <laughs> That's kind of the 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 take home point. So yeah. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much. That brings us to the end of our question. So thanks, Jerry, for sharing your experiences uh, with what you've been uh, working on with BSNA integrations. And thank you for sharing that with us. Uh, as Jerry stated before, we will get the recording of the whole webinar posted uh, within the next week, as well as a uh, final version that can be shared publicly of his story map. And so you can reference that. If you have any questions, again, Jerry had his uh, contact information in his presentation. You can also reach out to us at Imagine and we can get those questions forwarded on as well. So with that, thank you everyone for attending and uh, we look forward to seeing you at our next webinar series uh, installment, which is gonna be on April 1st. Uh, and that information is presented to you again there. So with that, uh, we wanna just thank you and we hope you have a great and safe day.